Hi, this video will cover the example notes receivable transactions from chapter 7. So what I've done is I've deleted all the journal entries so I can take you step by step. First thing we're going to do is we're going to use that PRT formula. I call it the party formula. Principal times rate times time equal interest. This is what we use to calculate simple interest. And here's our given information. We have our principal, $10,000. Interest rate, 12%. This is the annual rate. Whenever you're given an interest rate, it's always in terms of one year. And then your time. The terms will specify how long the person signing the note has to pay back the money. Now keep in mind, this example is dealing with a notes receivable. So even though we have a promissory note and you're reading, they talked about the maker of the note and the payee of the note. Keep in mind, these are the books of the person that is loaning the money out, so the lender. So this is on the, from the lender's perspective. Um, in addition, the customer, the person borrowing the money, has actually signed it, and the date that was signed was October 1st. So what we'll need to do is calculate when this note will actually mature. So since it is a 120-day note, there's a calculation, and I tell my face-to-face -face students to use their fists. And what I mean by that is, let me see, hold. So when you use your fist, you're gonna see that you have knuckles, and then that big knuckle will be um, the January, the January date, which has 31 days. And then the low valley between the two knuckles will be February, which has 28 days. And then the knuckle will be March, has 31 days. Then the valley, um, will it be April with 30 days and so on all the way through the process when you get to the last knuckle that will be July and July has 31 days and the next month is August so when you start all over again July and August both have 31 days so using this information uh, happens to be that July and August don't fall within this date range of 120 days we look at the first month since it was signed on October 1 that means there were 31 days, it's a big knuckle, October is a big knuckle month. And so if you take the 31 days in the month of October, subtract the one, that's 30 days that you will allow someone else to use your money um, during October. Then um, the next month has 30 days, so that's 30 days from October, 30 days from November, that's a total of 60 days. And then in December, there's another 31 days, so that right there is what, 30 plus 30, is 60 plus the 31, that's 91 days. So if you're trying to figure out when it matures and it's a 120 day note, take the 91 days, subtract that against the 120, then that means there's 29 days left. The following month after December is January, so January 29th will be the date of maturity. So our maturity date will be January 29th of the following year, and this happens to be, what, 2017, so this will be your maturity date. So now that we have the dates in question, now it's time to record the journal entries. Now the very first journal entry will be the record of when we issued the note, when the customer signed it. So this will be due October 1 of 2016, let me make sure. So October 1st, and because we are signing, the customer signed the note, they're doing this as a settlement of their accounts receivable. So they were unable to pay the cash that was needed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the principal portion, which goes to the notes receivables. So we'll debit notes receivables. Keep your reference blank, because we're not posting yet. And then the full amount of the principal was $10,000. Then we are going to credit the accounts receivable, because on this one, we're not actually giving them um, cash we're set, settling an existing accounts receivable account. So we're gonna credit the accounts receivable and so they no longer owe us for the AR, we're gonna collect on the note instead. So that's on October 1. Now the next entry will be on the date of um, recording of the accrued interest. Now, depending upon when the company actually prepares financial statements, will determine when this entry is made. Now, if we're gonna be making this, let's say monthly, and we're doing monthly financial statements, then we're gonna to have to prepare an adjusting entry every single month until this particular note matures of the following year. So on October 31st, the first month that we're gonna prepare adjusting journal entries, 
we're going to have to accrue for the interest. And we do this by recording interest receivable because we, again, are the lender. So we have the right to receive interest that was earned on um, this $10,000 when um, the note matures. And we're going to go ahead and recognize the revenue now because of the revenue recognition principle, so interest revenue. Now the question is, how much are we going to debit to receivables and how much are we going to credit to the um, interest revenue? We're going to use the PRT formula. So as of October 31, we're talking about 10000 is the amount of principal. The annual interest rate that was given to us at the beginning was 12%. And in the month of October, we're talking about 30 days. So what we'll need to do here is 10000 times 0.12, which is 12%, Converted to decimals times 30 over 360. Now, in your textbook and um, for a lot of financing companies, they will use 360 for their years instead of 365. They say they use it because the numbers are easily divisible by 10, 2, 30, 12. I mean, it's a very friendly number, but reality is a lot of companies may use this because they get slightly more interest. You can calculate it with a calculator, but a lot of times they'll use the 360, and you should see that in your reading for Chapter 7. So once we do that, we multiply those three factors, we get $100. So $100 will be the amount of interest we will accrue for those 30 days in which they had use of our $10,000. Then the next entry will be November 30th on that same year. And here, we will accrue some more interest. But keep in mind that this is for a full month. Now, in this particular month, they actually had 30 days. And because they had 30 days in here, you could do 30 over 360. But 30 over 360 is the same as 1 over 12, so 1 12. So depending upon your time period, your time period in terms of one year will determine what your T value is for our formula. So again, the formula, I said earlier, principal times rate times time equals interest. So again, 10,000 times 1.112, and this is the 30 days in the month of November. And we'll go ahead and do the math, and we still should get $100, just like we got previously, because we're using the same factors. Now for the month of, let's say, December, December has 31 days in it. So if we're doing a note that's in terms of days, we're going to use the $10,000.12 for the, I mean the percentage. And then since December has 31 days, we're using 31 over 360. So the entries are going to be exactly the same, except for the dollar amount, since there's, what, one additional day in there. So that ends up being 103, and I just want to make my format right. So I get 103 for my debit and my credit, rounded to the nearest whole dollar, and that's what we have for December 31st. Now this is under the assumption that you're doing monthly financial statements. If you were doing annual financial statements, then you would just do 91 days over 360, assuming it was the calendar year, and then you would have 303 for adjustments for December only. But we've done all three. Now, it is, let's say, January. When is our note mature? January 29, 2017. So what we're going to do here is January 29th, the date the note matures, this is where we're going to receive the money. Assuming the person has done what they said they were going to do and honor their word, we're going to collect cash. Well, the question is, is how much cash are we going to collect? Well, we're going to collect the principal plus the interest. So that means we're going to have to recognize the fact that we've already accrued previously in our interest receivable account the 303. How do I get the 303? Again, add up the previous three adjustments. So that is the 103 for this receivable amount, the 100 for this receivable amount, and the second 100. So that's a total of 303. Then we're also going to get some interest revenue 
for those 29 days. So that means we got to do a calculation here. And I end up getting, what, 96.6, which is 97. So interest revenue is going to be $97 credit. And then, of course, we're going to get rid of the principal. That's notes receivable for the full amount of 10000 So how much are we talking in terms of cash? We should be receiving 301 the 97 and the $10,000 principal. So we're expecting to receive a check of 10400 assuming they honored their word. Now, if they didn't honor their word, we would have these items that we would also be collecting, or not collecting, but crediting, um, so forth. So the 303, but the thing is, since they didn't honor their promise, we didn't get the cash. Now, depending upon whether or not we expect to collect the money, did they just like, oh, I don't have it on the 29th, but I will gladly have it um, a week from now or two weeks from now, then what we'll need to do is we need to set up an accounts receivable. Now, because the original term set the maturity date is on the 29th, we can't tack on any more or any additional penalties because we didn't agree to that. So it's like a contract. So we only agree to basically charge them interest for these 120 days, and we expect a payment on the 120th day. So here we're going to set up an accounts receivable. No more interest can be accrued because we didn't specify that. No other additional fees can be charged. We didn't specify that, but we want our money. We have the right to receive this money, and we expect collection to be likely. So this is what we will record, a debit to AR for the 10400 and we'd have the same credits. Now on the flip side, if we see, oh, we're looking at the Fresno Bee, and oh my gosh, this company's declared bankruptcy, they're not paying us our money, it's now the 29th, and collection is not expected, then what we'll do here is, we'll basically write it off to our allowance for doubtful accounts, and because it's collection is not expected, we don't want to recognize any more revenue because we already what? No, we're not going to get it. We're not going to ever receive it, so we don't expect to collect it. So what we're going to do is go ahead and credit the receivable for 303, credit the principal amount for 10000 We're not going to recognize that additional $97 for those 29 days, and we're just going to write it off against our allowance for doubtful accounts for 10303 and we're done. So if you have any questions, um, post in Google Hangout. This is part one and part two of the video. And remember, today's a great day to learn accounting.